morning, everybody, and welcome to On the Clock with Personal Living Alert. I'm David, and I am with Personal Living Alert. Today, we're going to talk with a good friend of mine, Rich Ciclio. Rich works for Comfort Keepers, which is a home health agency based in Naples, Florida. Rich, good morning, and how are you today? Good morning, David. I am doing, I am doing, I'm doing well today. No complaints, no complaints. Very glad to hear that. You know, it's a little chilly here on the East Coast. You know, chilly is all relative. It's, I think it's in the upper 70s. <laughs> yeah, it's about the same here in, in, in Collier County. I woke up with a little, you know, I mean, not, not that we can complain because people up north are like, you got to be kidding me. I'd kill for 77 degrees, you know. I know, I know. Hey, Rich, you know, how long you been at Comfort Keepers? What's your background? Why are you in the senior market? So I've been with Comfort Keepers a little under a year. Um, now, my, my, in my previous life, I was a teacher for about 10 years. Um, and then as I was teaching, kind of got a little burned out. I was, having, I was working three jobs just to kind of make ends meet. Um, got a little burnout and um, was looking for something else. Well, a friend of mine who was also a teacher had left teaching and got into healthcare. Um, she had gotten a job with Comfort Keepers, really loved it, um, and was like, you know what, Rich, I think you would be perfect for this. You should look into it. She sent my resume over to Comfort Keepers. Um, I came and interviewed, and I was blessed that they took a chance on somebody who didn't have any experience um, in marketing leading up to that. Um, and they, they took a chance on me, and things have worked out great. I absolutely love working for this company. That's fantastic. It's interesting. I spoke to uh, another home health agency guy yesterday, uh, Adam Corcoran, and he was an ex-teacher also. He taught for, I think, four or five years. So Yeah, and you know what's funny about Adam? I know Adam. He, um, he, me and him both taught eighth grade math. <laughs> I don't know if that says anything about the quality of the teaching or what's going on, but who knows? <laughs> we'll move on from we both there. have the same haircut, too. We, both have we the all same go haircut. to the same barber. We all do, all three of us. That's it. So, you know, COVID-19, it's impacting everybody. Uh, I understand we're flattening the curve, which is a great thing, but there's still gonna be an impact in Collier County and impacting home health agencies in Collier County. Tell me, how is it impacting home health agencies? Well, I mean, the biggest thing that, the biggest impact that we've seen obviously is safety. You know, safety has now become, you know, first and foremost, safety for our caregivers, safety for our clients. So we are making sure that everybody has the proper PPE equipment to go in and do their jobs and provide that safe environment for, for everyone. But aside from just being safe, um, you know, it's impacted in some ways, people need home care more now than ever. Um, there's a lot of people who are now stuck at home alone. Um, Families are, are separated. Some, a lot of people don't have, um, they don't have anybody to help them. So believe it or not, you know, we've been busy with getting a lot of people who have needed that little extra help. Maybe they would have had a neighbor or somebody help them out. And now they don't have that. They don't have that friend to help them out. So they've, they've looked to home care um, for us to help. Interesting. I understand you guys take COVID-19 patients. Yes, we do. Are there any challenges, not with necessarily working with somebody with COVID-19, but even getting maybe a caregiver in to work with them? Are, from a staffing standpoint, are you running into any challenges working with COVID-19 people? Obviously, it's got to be somebody who's willing to, who's willing to do it. Um, and we do, believe it or not, we have, I guess, I guess it goes with the whole state of mind of a caregiver. A caregiver does this job because they really have a, a huge heart um, for seniors. So a lot, of, a, lot more, a lot more caregivers, David, than you would think were more than willing to take on the challenge of, of working with a COVID-19 patient. I mean, obviously we, had a, we, we, we um, provided them with all the proper PPE equipment that they would need, um, but uh, you know, we've the one the other thing that we've done is we've only the, the caregivers that are helping COVID-19 patients, those are the only patients or the only clients of ours that they're helping. We don't have them help a COVID-19 client and then go and help somebody who doesn't have COVID-19. So that's the one thing that we've got we we had to ensure was that they were strictly and de designated to the COVID-19 clients and only the COVID-19 clients. I think it's pretty 
outstanding that there's a company like yours is actually working with COVID-19 because I think there are a lot of companies out there because they don't know and they shy away from handling people with COVID-19 because they're, they're afraid. Right. Well, yeah. I and, mean, you know, fear has been what's, what's driven our country for the last couple of, a couple of months. And rightfully so. And rightfully so. I mean, this, is, this has been scary. But, the, you know, the other thing that you got to understand is with, with testing and, and everything that's going on, I mean, potentially, you don't know who's got COVID-19 and who doesn't. You know what I mean? So at least we're taking all the proper precautions to make sure that we're ensuring all of our caregivers are safe and, and, and equipped to be able to handle anybody for that matter. I, I think that's what you got to do. Now, Comfort Keepers is a national and international organization. I think there's over 700 Comfort Keepers, or, you know, satellite offices throughout the world. Um, are you getting guidance from corporate Comfort Keepers? Is it all internally that you're getting guidance from? Are you getting, is there an association for home health agencies that it might be providing some kind of guidance? Or how, how's that falling down to you guys, trickling down? So every day our general manager has a call with the state um, and the state gives them, you know, the new guidelines, the new procedures, new expectations um, for whatever is coming down from the governor. Um, after that phone call, our general manager will then have a corporate call with the, with the corporate offices and they basically take the information that was given to them by the state and they talk about ways that comfort keepers will implement those those whether it's guidelines, whether it's procedures, whatever, whatever it is, whatever information um, they got from that state call. And uh, they come to, you know, they come to an agreement with all the general managers and they say, all right, we are going to lock our door. Like right now, our doors are locked. Um, it, if somebody wants to visit our facility, a caregiver who has to drop off care notes or something like that, they have to we meet them outside of the office. We give them a mask. They come into the office. They're very restricted in where they can be. And basically, those guidelines came down from the state for healthcare, and Comfort Keepers went on that corporate call, and they said, okay, this is the procedures that we're going to have for visitors coming into the office. So everything is always a collaboration, and we are, we are blessed to have um, wonderful people in our corporate offices who um, have a great understanding and a great empathy for what we're going through. That's awesome. Are you guys not just your organization, but as a whole, are you, do you know, when you talk to others, are you guys having a, a tough time finding PPE stuff or hand sanitizers and things that you need on your daily existence, personally and professionally to keep everybody healthy and safe? Well, that has been the biggest challenge. Um, that has been the biggest challenge to date right now um, since COVID-19 came into play. Um, our director of nursing, Kayla Harm, has done a fantastic job about being very, very persistent I will say, in contacting emergency services in Collier County um, now, and in Lee County as well. We service Lee, Collier, and Charlotte County. Um, but, you know, and that has been, that has been, it has been, a, it has been a test because we're not the only home care company in there. We're not the only senior living facility that, that's looking for something. All these senior living facilities are looking for PPE equipment. Everybody in healthcare, the hospitals, rehabs, SNFs, all of them are all looking for the same material. So it's, there's only so much material to go around. We, we've been blessed to get some rather large shipments in from emergency services in Collier County that has afforded us the luxury to be able to, to provide our caregivers and our clients with a safe environment. So we've been very lucky. And you know, one of the things that I've noticed is that, uh, and, and, and I understand you're lucky, and what I've noticed is that Collier County has not been impacted as greatly as Broward County. So I can only imagine the challenge that you guys have. I wonder if they're tripled, quadrupled on the other coast, you know, because there's so many more people here infected and things like sure. that. Why do you think there's less people in, impacted in Collier County? Is it strictly a density thing or any, any clue? I want to go with the, I'm going to go with the the population density in, in in Collier County. Collier County is a little bit more spread out, um, even as even as compared to its neighboring county, Lee. Lee is more densely populated than 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 Collier County, um, which is why I think the numbers are a little bit are are a little bit less. 
um, than than your your side of the uh, the state. Now, with the restrictions easing, which is a great thing, hope that means we're we're getting ahead of this finally. Um, what do you think? the new normal is going to be for comfort keepers and for other home health agencies. Are you always going to be wearing masks for the next three months, six months, a year, two years, for forever? Do you think there's going to be a new normal for AIDS in the home health arena? I think it is. I think it is going to be a new normal. I think, I mean, I think the world as we know it is going to change. Um, they, I was a recent, I was in listening to the radio this morning and they, um, Obviously, they have all these polls out now because people are now starting to ease into what this new normal is going to look like. And they were still saying about 60% of the country is still very hesitant to want to get go to a movie or travel on an airplane or do anything that involves a large gathering, even send their kids to school. So I think as from a healthcare standpoint, I think you can see masks and gloves um, is going to be a, a constant thing in, in, inside the homes. Um, I think the social distancing is going to be something that's going to be very prevalent as, as, as well. And I think the, just um, making sure that you have enough PPE equipment. My, my general manager has said she has spent more money on supplies in the last two months than she probably did in the previous two years. Wow. You know, so I think you're going to see a shift in budgets as well as more money has to be allocated towards PPE equipment more so than has ever been in the past. Yeah. I think the challenge, while it may diminish, is not going to go away. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you talked about going out and going to the movies. Do you foresee yourself going to the bars, going to the movie theaters, taking a vacation, traveling somewhere? What, what's your new normal going to be? Are you, are you willing and ready to go out and start living your life like you did in December? I think our economy needs needs it, um, and I and I and my heart goes out to all those people who I mean we we've, we've been fortunate to to still maintain uh, our jobs as as this has gone on, but you know I know there's a lot of people that have not. So I mean I'm hopeful that they'll be able to to get their jobs back and be able to to present their new normal. As for me, I'm probably on that sixty percent that's very hesitant to get to to get involved in large gatherings, um, traveling, and, and, and all of that. Um, I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime, you know? So it's it, to say that it, it's changed the way that I view things, it, it, it definitely has. Uh, you know, I agree 100%. I mean, Fabian and I talk about it all the time. is like, what are we going to do? And, and, and we're in that 60% also where I just don't know when I'm going to be comfortable going to a movie you know, and sitting next to somebody and even at, even at a restaurant, you know, and, or at a bar, I mean, at, at an outdoor sporting event, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think they can control everything enough where we're going to be comfortable maybe for another six months to a year, I, I think, you know, it's just, I, I just don't know. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see as phase one actually kicks off today. Uh, in in Lee and Collier counties, um, it's going to be interesting to see the reaction. You know, as they open up the beaches, are you going to see an influx of people now storming the beach, or are people going to be socially distant at, at the beaches? It's going to be really interesting to see. And you have no idea when they open things up if that revitalizes, for lack of a better term, the COVID nineteen, or or what's going to happen. Only time yeah. will tell. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see what this is going to look like. Well, you know what? I think that's a great way to kind of end this because I'll just say to you, I'll see you in a month and we'll talk about what's happening in the after phase one has been out there for a little while. Absolutely. But, I'd love to be back on. Yeah. Well, you know what? How could people get in touch with you if they just have general questions about COVID-19, if you can help them or any question about health care and home health aids? Now, how can they get in touch with you? All right, there's two ways. They can either call us. The phone number is 239-590-8999. Uh, again, that's 239-590-8999. Or they can visit us at comfortkeepers.com. All right, perfect. Again, Rich, I thank you very much for hanging out for us for about 15 minutes. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe, my friend. You as well, David.